In this video, I want to talk about three different models to help students understand subtraction of integers. The first model we're going to look at is the familiar number line. Students have already seen it in first, second grades when they were studying addition and subtraction. So now we're going to use it for negative numbers as well. And my first problem is 2 minus 3. And we can see this as starting, you are 2, and then you take 3 steps to the left. So you are 2, and then 1, 2, 3 steps to the left, and you land at minus 1, so that's the answer. Similarly, let's say you start at negative 2, and this minus here would mean that you move left 3 steps. You start here, and then 3 steps, 1, 2, 3, you land at negative 5. Now here is a more interesting situation, or maybe more difficult for the students, because it is the double negative here. Again, you can think of it as you are initially at negative 2, and this minus would mean that you start looking towards left, you're going to move left. But then, think that this second negative reverses the situation, so you turn 180 degrees and actually then move right. Three steps. So you start here, kind of look this way, but the other second negative reverses it, so you move three steps this way and land at one. Similarly here, you would start at 2, this minus would mean, okay, we're moving left, this minus would reverse it, move right, 3 steps, land at 5. And you might want to know this, note to students that these 2 minuses, it is as if they make a plus, 2 plus 3 equals 5. Similarly here, minus 2, it is as if minus 2 plus 3 equals 1. The second model we are going to look at is the difference, concept of difference. Students are already familiar with the idea, and when we look at, for example, 5 minus 2, you can think of it as the difference of 5 and 2, difference or the distance between these two numbers. And so that's 3. Now notice that here in the subtraction sentence we need to organize our numbers so that the greater number is first and the smaller number is last, so that we get a positive distance. If we write 2 minus 5, and think of that as the distance between 2 and 5, um, we need to remember to put the negative here, because the distance, though the distance is 3, if the numbers are organized this way, then the real answer is negative 3. And let's look at some more examples. How would you think about this as a difference of two numbers? Here, this would be the first number, this would be the second number. And our numbers here are not in the right order, so to speak, because the smaller number is first. So, the distance between these two numbers is 4, but it would have to be, be taken negative. Whereas here, we would have 2 and negative 2. And the distance or the difference between them, here the greater number is first, so the answer will be 4. Just like the distance is 4. And here, we have negative 1 and then negative 3. So the greater number is first. We can look at the numbers here, and their distance is the difference 2. And here we have negative 1 and 3. And negative 1 is, of course, smaller than this one, so they are in the opposite order. The distance would be 4 units, but we have to take it negative to make it right. The third and last model we're going to look at is that of counters. And here we are viewing subtraction as taking away. So students are surely familiar with that. Uh, in elementary school, they learn subtraction as taking away. And so here you have four positives and take away two would mean just, you know, cross out two. And what is left is, is two. And uh, now we can look at it with negative counters. If initially you have negative 5, and then this minus here means take away, and then this means take away negative 3, so you cross out negative 3, and what's left is negative 2. It's easy to see in this situation. This counter model works really well for this particular example. It doesn't work as easily for these two remaining examples I have here, and this might be a little bit more difficult for students, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, 
this would be a situation where we start out with one negative counter, and this means take away for positive counters, but there's none, right? There are no positive counters to cross away. So the trick is to add here pairs of positive negatives, which amounts to zero. So I will add here four pairs of positive negatives. So I have added zero, I have added nothing of value, but now I can cross out these four positives. And then it leaves five negatives. And here, this is similar. You start out with one negative counter, and you should take away four negative counters, but there's only one. So I'm going to add those three more negative counters, or three positive negative pairs, which amounts to zero, and then after that I can cross out four negatives, and it's going to leave me with three positives. So the bottom line in all this is that students do need to learn the various rules, definitions, and shortcuts that we can give them. For example, definition in school book might be that subtracting a number means adding its opposite, example here. Or the teacher might give a shortcut that if you have negative, ne negative, double negative, then it's the same as writing a plus sign instead of it. Or plus minus is the same as just writing single minus. And these are all good and students should learn to use them. But the models that we looked at previously can help students to justify and make sense of these rules and shortcuts, especially in the upper elementary and middle school level.